visiting the rainforests of Africa or the Pitcairn Islands of the Southern Pacific Ocean, and having no access to the internet. It's really annoying to get disconnected from the rest of the world when you need it the most, isn't it? SpaceX might know this problem, well, that's why they have launched the fastest internet in the world that has access from deep oceans to high mountain areas. What is this internet? How does it work, and how can it be helpful for you? Let's find out in this video. A fast and low-latency internet, Starlink is the world's first and largest satellite array that is now available and delivers broadband internet capable of supporting streaming video calls, online gaming, and more. Talking about the billionaire tycoon Elon Musk, thoughts that hit the mind are his electric car company, Tesla, space exploration venture SpaceX, and the purchase of Twitter. Some only know that he's one of the richest persons and are unaware of his Starlink, which focuses on selling internet connections to almost anyone on the planet through a growing network of private satellites orbiting around the Earth. Talking about Starlink, let's begin with its background. Starlink was operated and launched in 2019 by SpaceX and provides satellite internet access coverage to almost 45 countries. But the development of this network began in 2015. As of December 2022, Starlink consists of over 3,300 mass-produced low-Earth orbit small satellites, which communicate with designated ground transceivers. Elon's company, SpaceX plans to deploy nearly 12,000 satellites that are later on expected to extend to 42,000. In order to provide high bandwidth, low latency connectivity to a large number of people, um, you need, uh, need a lot of satellites um, and they need to be at low Earth orbit so that latency is, is low. In December 2022, SpaceX announced reaching more than 1 million subscribers, which are quite encouraging for this startup. The SpaceX satellite development facility houses all the Starlink development, research, manufacturing, and orbit control teams in Washington. In May 2018, the cost of this decade-long project was estimated by the company to be at least $10 billion US dollars to design, build, and deploy the constellation. By 2025, SpaceX expects more than $30 billion in revenue from its satellite constellation, while in the same year revenues from its launch business are expected to reach $5 billion US dollars. Astronomers show interest and concern about the effects of the constellation on ground-based astronomy and how the satellites will add to an already crowded orbital environment. SpaceX has implemented several upgrades to Starlink satellites focused on reducing their brightness during operations to mitigate astronomical concerns. The satellites also contain Krypton-fueled hull thrusters, which live at the end of their lives, allowing them to deorbit. The satellites have uplinking data which helps avoid collisions. With SpaceX's development, Starlink speeded up the process in 2021. Now after many successful launches within two years, Starlink has made it possible that over 2,000 functional satellites to orbit around Earth. Many customers are now anxiously waiting to receive equipment and start services. Satellite internet competitors, including Viastat, Huisnet, and Amazon's Project Caper, have noticed Starlink's momentum, and they are encouraging regulatory jousting and attempts to slow the billionaire down. Recently, DISH claimed that its satellite signals would be interfered with by 5G expansions in the 12 GHz band, so it disagrees with Starlink. According to the reports, Starlink secured nearly $885.5 million from the Federal Communications Commission in grant funds over nearly two years. However, the Commission previously claimed that the Internet service failed to meet program requirements, so they decided to reverse that decision and cancel Starlink's subsidies. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel said that we can't afford to promote ventures that are not likely to meet program requirements and are not delivering the promised speeds. Like other existing satellite internet providers such as Viasat and HughesNet, Starlink wants to sell internet access, particularly to people in those areas and parts of the world who don't already have access to high-speed broadband. According to the developers, Starlink internet is ideally suited for areas of the world where connectivity is a challenge. Unbounded by traditional ground infrastructure, where access has been unreliable or completely unavailable, Starlink can deliver high-speed broadband internet to such locations. Currently, Starlink services are only available in some regions in the US and Canada, but attempts are being made to boast nearly half a million customers and to make them active on all continents. As more satellites enter the constellation, it is expected that the coverage map will grow soon. To make the internet connection, customers need to set up a small satellite dish at their place to receive the signals 
and pass the bandwidth on to their router. Several mounting options are available for rooftops, yards, and any other mounting place. Starlink app is also available for iOS and Android, which helps customers to pick the best location and position for their receivers. Isn't it interesting and amazingly helpful, especially when you are frustrated by your internet connection? During the third quarter of 2022, the internet speed tracking Psychocla, which analyzes satellite internet performance, reported that there were average download speeds of approximately 53 megabits per second in the US offered by Starlink, which is significantly down compared to the median download speed of just over 100 megabits per second, reported at the end of 2021. But from the satellite rival Viastat, the results are still nearly double and just triple the median numbers of HughesNet. As Starlink's website says, users of the Starlink network in most locations over the next several months can expect to see data speeds vary from 50 to 150 megabits per second and latency from 20 to 40 milliseconds. Starlink also gave a warning of brief periods of no connectivity at all. Data speed, latency, and uptime are expected to improve dramatically as Starlink launches more satellites, installs more ground stations, and improves the networking software. In February of last year, Elon Musk tweeted that by the end of 2021, the service will double its top speeds to 300 megabits per second. But speeds might vary depending on location and time, so it's difficult to evaluate such a claim. In a recent email, Starlink informed its customers that new plans have been announced to put a data cap trying to mitigate some of the issues caused by a small number of users consuming high amounts of data. Excited by the advantages of this high-speed internet, if you also want to avail of this service, fortunately, Starlink is now accepting orders but only on a first-come, first-served basis. So initially, you'll need to request service, then put down a $99 deposit and wait for your way through the backlog. Starlink said that some pre-orders could take six months to fulfill in some regions, so patience is needed. Initially, the service was billed at $99 per month, including all taxes and fees, for the mountable satellite dish and router that will be needed to install at home. An initial payment of $499 should be paid. In March 2022, SpaceX raised those prices to $110 per month and $599 up front, despite predictions from SpaceX executives that the hardware costs would come down over time. $110 per month is the cost of an internet connection, which is a lot. Still, Musk is betting that the cost will be worth it to those who are living without access to a reliable connection, and maybe he's right. Instead of promising to blanket the entire Earth with coverage by this fall, Starlink service is currently only available to selected regions in a few countries. The coverage map will grow considerably as more satellites join the constellation in low Earth orbit. The list of countries that are currently serviced by the growing network of low-Earth orbit satellites includes the US, Australia, the UK, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Canada, Ireland, Switzerland, Denmark, Belgium, Portugal, Austria, and New Zealand. The pre-order agreement of the internet includes options for requesting service in other countries, including Poland, Italy, Spain, and Chile. Before it can claim to offer full service to a majority of the globe, Starlink will likely need at least 10,000 satellites in orbit. Right now, the satellites that are available focus on regions sitting between 45 and 53 degrees north latitude. Wynne Shotwell, President and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX, said that they have successfully positioned 1,800 or so satellites, and once all those satellites reach their functional orbit, they will have continuous global coverage. In September 2021, in a reply to a Twitter user who asked when Starlink would finish its beta phase, Musk replied next month. According to the FCC, which recently added Starlink to its database of broadband providers, the service was available to 26.7% of Americans as of June 2021. At that point, 100% of customers had access to max download speeds of 100 megabits per second and upload speeds of up to 10 megabits per second. Future FCC releases will give us a good look at how much the service is growing and what to expect from it. With its SpaceX mission to colonize Mars, Musk also aims to render Starlink services on Mars in the future. Earth-Mars synchronization happens roughly every two years. So every two years there's a, an opportunity to, to fly to Mars. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships. In 2016, Shotwell said that if a million people are sent to Mars, there should be some way for them to communicate and people who go to Mars would not be satisfied with some terrible old-fashioned radios. 
They want to use the internet on their iPhones or Androids on Mars, which service is most probably provided by Starlink. Still, even with top speeds at 150 megabits per second, Starlink's satellite internet speed won't be near the gigabit fiber speeds and each transmission needs to travel on its round trip from people's location to the stratosphere because of the sheer distance. That's why it also jacks up latency which often creates awkward silence in a conversation if you are talking to someone over a satellite connection. So by placing satellites into orbit at lower altitudes than before and 60 times closer to the Earth's surface than traditional satellites, for the company's claims, Starlink promises to improve upon existing expectations for satellite connections. This low-Earth orbit approach helps the signals to travel fast with less latency. If continuous improvements are made, the internet will definitely beat its competitors very soon. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends so we can keep making them. Also, make sure to check out other videos on our channel as well. Thanks for watching.